In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we hear in today's gospel, Jarius comes to Jesus asking for him to heal his daughter. And Jesus says to him, do not be afraid, have faith. So let us just pause for the times this week where we may have questioned our own faith and trust in Jesus Christ and let us ask for God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us gather all of our prayers together into one. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be your children of light, 
Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in front of light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living, for he fashioned all things that they might have been, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is no destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. It's the word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for you for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the area, the sea. One of the synagogue officials, Jarius, came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, and she will get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She had said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she had been healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But the disciple said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And you looked around to see who had done it. The woman realized what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While she was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that had been reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany, accompany him inside, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He looked at the child, took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. And then they were utterly astounded. He gave them strict orders that no one should know of this and said that she should be giving something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a couple of brief announcements. First, I want to thank those who participated in the diocesan appeal. Um, it ends at the end of this month, and we've uh, made some good progress, so I thank you for your support and your generosity to the diocese for the important programs that the appeal goes for. Second, as you know, June 30th, we are open fully here at the church. So therefore, no more registering for Mass. Now everybody shake your head that you understand. And I, and I really thank the entire office staff and all of you for your support. Um, it's been a long road and we've come through it. So next week, no phone calls to Father about if you're coming or not. I expect you to be here. And all the doors will be opened as well. And so we truly celebrate our independence. Um, thirdly, last but not least, I've been instructed by the diocese to reopen um, Galway Mission Church. So it'll probably happen sometime in July. We got to look at all the mass schedules for the weekend and decide how we're going to um, accompany this. My brothers and sisters, we do not need to go looking for difficulties or any kind of trouble 
in order to draw close to our Lord. Certainly, it's not God's wish that any of us should suffer. And even though we do suffer, we know that our suffering brings us closer to God. But instead of worrying, let us just be certain that God is present with us during all moments of our lives. Times of joy, times of sorrow, times of anxiousness and worry, our tenderly caring Father is always there to be with us. In our times of need, he's there. In our times of healing and renewal, he is there. Let us stand strong on the foundation of our faith. It is our faith that keeps us strong. Just like the two people in today's gospel, the one who had gone to Jesus and begged that he would touch her, touch his daughter so she would be healed, but also the woman who just heard about Jesus and just reached out her arm to touch his clothing, she knew that she would be healed. Both of these people approached Jesus with some kind of fear and worry and anxiety. And he tells Jairus, do not be afraid, just have faith. The woman who was suffering for 12 years, her faith was so strong that all she wanted to do was just touch the cloth that Jesus wore, knowing that she would be healed. If our faith is as strong as the two examples we have in this week's gospel, then we will get through anything. The message that Jesus gave to the, all the people that very day is the same message that we must live by. Do not be afraid, just have faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Confident in the foundation of our faith, let us together proudly profess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God, your Son destroys the chains of death and offers us good news of everlasting life. Hear us as we prepare to go into the world to serve those who are in most need. In thanksgiving for the newly ordained priests, especially Father Nathaniel of our diocese, and for all priests and sisters and brothers, who inspire and strengthen us by the witness of their commitment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For leaders of nations, may they attend to the needs of their people with humility and justice by standing with the weak and vulnerable, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who suffer with addictions, find the sufficient grace and support they need to live their struggles bravely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For first responders, may they respond to emergencies with prudence and wisdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. 
for the grace to live with greater faith in Christ's power over sickness and death. Let us pray to the Lord. For all students who graduated and for parents and teachers who have guided them, let us pray to the Lord. That people everywhere will have an unfailing respect for all persons from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, especially Robert McClements Jr., may be soon come to the face with Jesus their Savior, let us pray to the Lord. And, and for the special attentions of Katie Pelletier, let us pray to the Lord. And let us just pause for a moment in prayer and let us pray for hope for all those families affected in Florida by the devastation of the condo building. And we pray for the joy of eternal life and trust in the Heavenly Father's plan. We pray to the Lord. God of life and of the living, you make all things that have breath. We offer you our prayers and we ask that you hear and grant what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you had loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to the gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought before you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it. He said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peregrine and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through who bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ can be saved for eternal life.
Through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, let us pray for peace in our hearts and our families, the protection against Satan and evil in the country. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the sins of the world. May God be with you, King, we humbly pray. And you now, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, most captain and house of Satan, and all the evil spirits, who prowl around the world, seek to the souls. Amen. And on this 40th anniversary of the apparitions in Medjugorje, Our Lady, Queen of Peace, let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful week, everyone.